day is it? What time of the day is it? I don't even know. I'm just like, Ugh. Be thorough in your soul-winning presentation. We're going to talk about your thoroughness. Be thorough in your soul-winning presentation. Be thorough. All right? I'm going to give you 19 points. Number one. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> uh, uh. Be thorough in your soul-winning presentation. All right, number one, use the key verse. Use the key verse. Now, we're talking about when you present the gospel. There is a key verse. Does anybody know what it is? 1 John 5, 13. Write that down. 1 John 5. 513 here's what it says first John 513 these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that you have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God almost almost without fail on a rare occasion it, it's not this way but almost without fail I'll ask people do you know for sure when you die or I won't say it like that I'll, I'll say has anybody ever showed you from the Bible the verses where it says how you can know for sure that you'll go to heaven one day? And most of the time, they're like, no. And when I show them 1 John 5, 13, it says, the first part of the verse, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that you have eternal life. When they see that, it's like their eyes get big it's almost like a light turns on. It, and I say, it says, you may know that you have eternal life. That's the key verse. That's the key verse. I emphasize two things. You may know that you have eternal life. And then once I got them hooked, like, man, I can know. I'll say, it also tells us how we can know. And it says, these things have I written. So I say to them, there are four things that God wrote in the Bible to tell you how to know you're going to go to heaven. Let me show you what they are. And then, and then I go to the Romans road. Okay, so, but when it comes to being thorough in your soul winning presentation, the first thing you got to do is use the key verse. 99 times out of 100, when I win someone to Christ, I start with 1 John 5.13. On a rare occasion, I don't, and that's only when the Holy Spirit leads me to start at a different place in the Bible. But that's an incredible verse. Often when I read that verse to them, I'll say this. Many times people have said to me, nobody knows for sure that they're going to go to heaven. And I'll say, but this verse says you can know. So then I say this. If a person can know for sure that they'll go to heaven, I'll say this. I want to know. I want to know. And usually when I say it like that, they don't even think about it, but their heads are nodding. Like that. Like they're, they're like, yeah, I want to know. <laughs> you know? I mean, so it just kind of goes like that. So it's kind of like a subliminal thing that um, whenever, whenever I say you may know, and, and people have said, uh, you know, over the years, nobody knows for sure. They're almost like, yeah, I've, I've said that, or yeah, I've heard people say that. And I say, but the Bible says you may know. And if you may know, I want to know. And then they're nodding in agreement, right? So then I got them. And now they're going to listen to these four things. A lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times people say to me, can I have those verses? I want to write them down. You know, like that. And I'll say, no, I'm going to give them to you when I'm done. Don't worry about it. I'll give them to you. And they're in the gospel track, right? So I I'll give them to you. And they're like, oh, okay, good. You know, when they act like that, when I show them the key verse, I mean, it's like almost 100% they're going to get saved when they're acting like that. I mean, it's a key verse. It's incredible. Number two, explain well the four points to the plan of salvation. Explain well the four points to the plan of salvation. So the last lecture, I told you what those four points are. Be sure and explain them well. Don't rush through them. Don't. So let me give you an example. Point number one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God says we're all sinners. Okay, point number two. No, 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 no. You just rushed right through it. We see, we want to get people to, to be saved. We're not trying to get them to pray a prayer. We want them to be saved. And so that's what we're doing. 
So don't rush through it. Explain all four points well. All right? We're, we're being thorough. All four points. Number three, never proceed to the next point unless he believes the previous points. Never proceed to the next point unless he believes the previous points. Okay, for example, if the person does not admit that they've sinned, there's no point in going any further. The second point is the wages of sin is death, and that's physical death and spiritual death, which is hell. If they don't believe in hell, there is no point in going further. They've got to believe th that, that there is a place called hell, and that's where people, some people will go there when they die. They've got to believe that. Number three, they've got to believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. They have to believe that. They have to believe Jesus died on the cross to pay for their sins. He's the only way to heaven. They have to believe that. And then number four, um, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They've got to believe that they have to ask Jesus to save them. If they don't believe that, I'm not going to pray with them, right? So the point is uh, never proceed to the next point unless he believes the previous point. Number four, use Revelation 20, verses 14 and 15. Use Revelation 20, verses 14 and 15. I always use this verse at point number two. So I'll read Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. And once I explain to them that the penalty for sin is death, I'll say something like this. Now, we all know we're going to die one day. Everybody will. Did you know the Bible says there's a second death? And like nine out of ten people say, no, I've never heard of the second death. I go right to Revelation 20, 14, and 15, and it says this. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And I'll explain to them the first death that's mentioned in this verse is physical death. The second death is spiritual death. That's the death of a soul, which is what hell is. And I say this, as I'm explaining it, I'll say when you die, when all of us die, our souls are going to leave our bodies and they're either going to go to heaven or go to hell. Heaven is eternal life. Hell is is the second death, and we're going to go to one place or the other. And then I say this, if I could choose or I would prefer, I would want to go to heaven. And they're like, yeah, I want to go to heaven too. And then I say this, I definitely don't want to go to hell. And if I can get them to understand that and say, yeah, I don't want to go to hell either. And then I'll say this, do you know that not everybody makes it to heaven. Some people do go to hell. Yeah, yeah, some people do go to hell. Well, the Bible tells us who's going to hell in the very next verse. And then I read, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So point number five, write this down. Emphasize the book of life. <sighs> Emphasize the book of life. Here's what I say to them. The only reason anybody goes to hell, their name is not written in the book of life. That is the only reason. Nobody goes to hell because they're a sinner. We're all sinners. If people went to hell because they are a sinner, then you and I are never going to go to heaven because we are a sinner. <laughs> Amen? So people don't go to hell because they're a sinner. They go to hell. There's only one reason why anybody goes to hell. Their names are not found written in the book of life. So here's the way I explain it to them. After I read that, I emphasize, have you ever heard of the book of life? Again, nine out of ten people are going to say no. And I'm going to say, let me tell you what it is. It is a book in heaven. It is a reservation book for heaven. It is a book where Jesus has written the names of everybody who's going to go to heaven. And then I say this, when you die... You're going to stand before God, and you're going to have a judgment day. You're going to be judged for your life. Almost everybody agrees with that. You're going to have a judgment day when you stand before God. And I say this. One of the things that God is going to do, he's going to open the book of life. If your name is in it, you're going to heaven. If your name is not in it, you are not going to go to heaven. And then I say this. Has anybody ever told you how to get your name? in that book. And again, nine times out of ten, they'll go, no. I'll say, 
Okay, I'm sorry. Have a nice day. Bye. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't do that. I uh, just kidding. No, I you know preachers don't lie. We just fib. Anyway, I was just fibbing. Uh, but no, I don't say that. I say you know what? I'm going to tell you right now, and that's point number three. And then I go back to point number three, Romans six twenty three, and then I continue with the rest of the gospel presentation. So the 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 two things I want you to think about. Okay, the three things is this. Number one. Always use the Romans road. Always have all four points of the plan of salvation when you witness to someone. But point number two, the key verse is 1 John 5, 13. Always use that. And then, then the third thing, emphasize the book of life. When I learned to use the book of life in my soul winning presentation, it just made it so much easier for people to see the need to be saved. Because when I get done explaining it, I say, everybody who calls on the name of the Lord for set to be saved, Jesus records their name in the book of life. And if you don't call upon him, your name is not going to be in the book. And when you see God when your life is over, he will not let you go to heaven. So it's just, you just explain it like that. Emphasize the book of life. Okay, before I go to point number six, the first five points, are there any questions? Everybody's good? Okay, number six, in your presentation, shoot down common misbeliefs about how one gets to heaven. In your presentation, shoot down common misbeliefs about how one gets to heaven. Again, we're talking about being thorough in our soul winning presentation, all right? This is what I do at point number three. Point number three I'll read Romans 6, 23, the second half of the verse where it says, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what I do is I say, point number three, God says eternal life is through Jesus. And I'll stop and say, that means Jesus is the only way to heaven. And then I'll ask him this, I'll tell them this, do you know why, or I'll say, the reason is, is because when Jesus died on the cross, he did that to pay for our sins. Sometimes I'll ask him in a question. I'll say, the reason Jesus is the only way to heaven is because he died on the cross. And I'll say, do you know why Jesus died on the cross? Now, most people understand he died to pay for our sins. Some people don't understand that. And they'll say, no, I don't know why he died on the cross. And then I'll explain it. He died to pay for our sins, right? So when I, when I do that, I, I explain the death of Christ as he, as he died to pay for our sins on the cross. I'll simply say this. Now, because Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins, he is the only way to heaven. No other way. And then I'll say this. Some people believe, and I'll say these four things most of the time. Some people believe their church will get them to heaven. Some people believe their religion will get them to heaven. Some people are trusting in their baptism to get them to heaven, like baptism as a baby. And then I'll say this. The majority of the people they believe their good life will get them to heaven. What they say to me is, if I do enough good deeds in life, when I die, God will let me go to heaven. And I say to them, All, although church is good, religion is good, baptism is good, and living a good life definitely is good, none of those things will get you to heaven. The only one who can get you to heaven is Jesus Christ. And then I'll say this, Jesus is the only one who can write your name in the book of life. And then, then I'll say this. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sin? If they say yes, then I'll say, does it make sense to you that he's the only one who can get you to heaven? And if they say yes, then I'll proceed to point number four. Now watch this. Before I get to point number four, I'll ask them a question. I'll say to them, I'm going to ask you a question before I show you point number four. And the last point. I'll say this. This is not a trick question, but I'm going to ask it. How many people do you suppose Jesus died for when he died on the cross? I'll ask him that. And almost every one of them will say, well, all of us. And I'll say that's exactly right. I've had some people say this before. Oh, a uh, whole bunch. Well, yeah, but how many? Well, uh, thousands. Higher. Millions. I'll go, higher. <laughs> They'll go, uh billions? I say, well, you're getting it. Uh, let's just try everybody. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the answer, everybody. You know, every once in a while people think it's a number. You know, I, no, I want them to understand he died for everybody. Amen? But then I'll say to them, however, everybody doesn't make it to heaven. Some people, they do go to hell. And I say to them, the reason is point number four. And so I just turned to point number four. And then I explained to them, you know, point number four is Romans 10, 13. All right, number seven, write this down. Talk slowly. Talk slowly. When you're, when you're witnessing to someone, don't speed talk. Have you ever speed read? Read a book fast? All right, you don't retain all of it when you read a book fast. No, you don't. You don't. Don't you disagree with me? No, I, I know you are. I know you are. <laughs> when you speed read, you catch bits and pieces of it, but you don't catch every single word. When you're presenting the gospel, do not speed talk. Don't do that. You're not trying to get done in 60 seconds or less. You're not. Um, take your time. Talk slowly. Make sure they hear every word that you're saying. Now, obviously, when you talk slowly, I'm not talking about, are you understanding what I am saying? <laughs> don't talk that slow, all right? I mean, come on. But, but what I'm saying is, don't be like this. Okay, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. Nobody's perfect. We've all done things we shouldn't have done. Do you understand that you've sinned before? Great. Okay, point number two. <laughs> You're not in a race, right? Talk slowly. Talk slowly. Do you know what people do when they're nervous and they're talking? They usually talk pretty fast when they're nervous. Don't do that. Just, just calm yourself down. Take a deep breath. Just talk like normal. Just talk slowly. Sometimes when I preach, I get going when I'm preaching, right? And sometimes people say, man, you're, you're preaching so fast. I didn't catch everything you said. And, and so I got to work on that, right? I mean, especially with people like Alex. I got to make sure I just talk it nice and slow because if not, I just fly right over his head. Ah, but at any rate, um, the fact of the matter is, don't speed witness. Just talk slowly. Okay, number eight. Oh, this is a big one. Do not come across as making a sale or using a sale pitch. Do not come across as making a sale or using a sales pitch. Have you ever had a salesman knock on your door? Have you ever understood they were in the middle of a soul winning presentation while they were talking to you? Yeah, don't come across that way. Don't. I'm telling you, it's not gonna it's not gonna be as successful. It's not. You know, don't don't have a clipboard. Okay, um, do you know for sure if you die today you go to heaven? Check. Yes, no. Okay, all right. Has anybody ever showed you from the Bible how you can know for sure you're going to heaven? Yes, no? Okay, all right. Um, if 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 you could know for sure that when you died you'd go to heaven, would you like to know that? Yeah, yeah, no, yes, okay, all right. Uh, would it be okay if I show you those ver is that all right? can I show you the verses about how <laughs> Ain't going to work, man. Ain't going to work. Don't come across as making a sale. You know, they should not leave the conversation with you with you thinking, yes, I got another one. Check. <laughs> I, I made another sale. Woohoo! Yeah, I'm going to get a raise. Except for if you're not listening while the preacher's preaching, you're not. Um, but anyway, um, <clears throat> Miss Secretary back there, say, uh, yeah, you didn't hear that, did you? All right. <laughs> I was talking about you. All right. Number, number nine. Here we go. Treat them like you would your loved one or best friend. Treat them like you would your loved one or best friend. Okay, let me give you an example of this. I had a grandmother who is 95 years of age. Her name is Fern Sulian, my grandmother Sulian. I tried witnessing to her over the years. She would not get saved. In fact, she got real angry at me, and she almost disowned me, and so I made a promise to her I would never witness to her again the rest of her life if she would just let me be her grandson. And so she said, okay. So I went year after year after year, never talking to her about being saved. And then my son David became a soul winner, and I said, hey, David, why don't you go talk to Grandma while we're here on vacation? See if you can talk to her about getting saved. And so he said, okay. So he went to talk to Grandma, and he went through the whole plan of salvation, just like I did. And she said, what about the people in Africa who've never heard the name Jesus? That's what she said to me when I witnessed to her in 1996 or 7, 1997. 
And uh, I witnessed her, and she would not get saved because she said, if the people in Africa are going to die and go to hell because they don't get saved and they never heard about Jesus, then I want nothing to do with it. And, and, and then later on, I wrote my soul winning book, and it really offended my grandmother, and she disowned me, and I was able to talk her out of disowning me. And, and so, um, so this is years later now. This is probably in 2000, I don't know, two or three or something like that. Or no, 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 it wasn't 2003. It was, uh, let's see here, uh, 2008 or nine. And so we were on vacation. I had David witness to her, and David went up and told her how to be saved, and then she said to him, what about the people in Africa who've never heard the name Jesus? And she said to him, if, if those people go to hell, then I want nothing to do with it. And so he had to stop. So years, a few years passed by, and I think this was now 2011, 2012, something like that. And Bob Gray was going to be preaching in Anderson, Indiana, where my grandmother lived. And he was going to be preaching at a church that was literally four or five blocks from where my grandmother Sulian lived. And I said, please, please, when you're there, would you please go by and witness to her? I gave him her name and her address, and I said, don't tell her that I sent you. Just go knock on doors and just treat her just like you would anybody else. Of course, he knew how to do that. And so he did. He witnessed to her. She got saved. She had tears in her eyes. He got a picture with her. He sent me the picture. Man, I was so, 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 so happy. I was so happy. My 95-year-old grandmother, Sulian, got saved. What a blessing. Now, the whole time prior to that, every time I would go soul winning and I met a lady at the door that looked like she was a grandmother. It means she had to be at least 53 years of age. I mean, at least. And so, but if I saw a lady that looked like she was a grandmother, I would treat her as if she were my grandmother with that much care and love because I really wanted my grandmother saved. And so many times after I would win ladies to the Lord that were grandmother age, as I was leaving, I'd say, Lord, my grandmother's not saved. Would you please send someone to my grandmother's house so that she can be saved? please. I just led somebody's grandmother to Christ. I really would like my grandmother to be saved. And, and God knew I was never going to witness to her again because she promised, she made me, you know, I, I promised her I wouldn't. And, and that's the only reason she continued to have a relationship with me. So the fact of the matter is when you're talking to someone, treat them like you would your loved one or best friend. If you had a loved one that was not saved, how would you want to present the gospel to that person? Would you want to come across as a sales pitch? Would you want to just go across as fast as you can? Would you want to skip something, not be thorough? No, man. It's your loved one. You would want to do it as best as you could. Well, do you know that every person that you, you meet, there's somebody's loved one? Every person. There's somebody's best friend? Treat them like that. They were your loved one and your best friend. Number 10, allow the Holy Spirit to give you some variations in verses that you use if, let me say that again, allow the Holy Spirit to give you some variations in verses that you use if it is necessary for the person you are witnessing to to understand the gospel. I know that's a long sentence, but I'll say it again. Allow the Holy Spirit to give you some variations in verses that you use if it is necessary for the person you're witnessing to to understand the gospel. Now, listen very carefully before we go on to the next point. I always use the Romans road, the four points to the Romans, plan, Romans road to heaven. Always do. But sometimes... The Holy Spirit says, use this verse too. And I'll, I'll go to that verse. Now, there's many, many verses, dozens of verses that sometimes I, I, I use to see someone get saved so they can better understand the gospel. It depends on who they are and what, what they've been taught, you know, what, what position they're in as far as their faith and, you know, just a variety of things. But I always use the Romans road, the four points to the Romans road. But sometimes I'll bring an additional verse in and that's so that people, 
you know, that they need to understand the gospel better that way. Um, anybody have any questions now up to this point? Did you have one, Gabe? Yes. Point number seven. Well, it depends. So um, chances are still no. I mean, I, I would ask her, can we sit down and I can show you this? Or if it's just, I mean, here's the thing. If she can't stand for very long and you speed talk and you pray with her, well, there's still a possibility that she didn't get it, you know, because you're, you're talking quite fast, if, if that's the case, right? So what I would do then, if she doesn't have an opportunity to sit down, if I have to like, speed talk for her to hear it i won't do it i'll just give her the gospel track and say would you please read this when you sit down just read this it'll tell you everything that i would have told you and then that's what i do um i i don't know very rarely if there's ever a time that i would ever speed talk i think what i would do if someone only had a few minutes i would still talk slowly but i may not use all of my illustrations that i would use I would talk slowly and use the verses and the four points, and then I would, you know, pray with them. But I, I don't know, Gabe. I don't feel comfortable speed talking. You know what I'm saying? If my normal gospel presentation is 20 minutes, I can shorten it to 10 minutes by not using all the extra illustrations and extra things. But um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go real fast over each of the four points. I'm, I'm just not gonna do that. So yeah, I mean, I can shorten my presentation down from 20 minutes to 10 minutes, but I'm still not gonna speed talk. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you, buddy. Anybody else have a question? Jordan, you raising your hand or are you fluffing your hair? Okay, all right. Number 11. Number 11. Give them opportunity to respond or ask questions. Give them opportunity to respond or ask questions. Again, we're talking about being thorough in your soul winning presentation. So in other words, um, if they don't get it, you, you just, you got to stop. You, you got to give them a chance to ask questions. When I used to soul win years ago, I'm talking 25, 30 years ago, I used to never let them ask questions. I used to think I got to get through the gospel, get them to the prayer, get them to pray, and then whew, they're saved. And if they ask questions, it may stop me from praying with them. That's how I used to think, thought. I used to think that way 30 years ago when I was soul win. But then I learned, no, I, I learned this. I'm not trying to get them to pray a prayer. I'm trying to help them to get saved. That's what I'm trying to do. So I just say, hey, is there any questions that you have? Does this make sense? Give them an opportunity to respond. You know, sometimes I'll say after point number three, um, do you have a question or uh, does, this make, does this make sense or do you want to say something? Like if, if they're, if I'm, so watch this. If you're presenting the gospel and you're talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and it's almost like, have you ever talked to someone where you couldn't get a word in edgewise? Like you're waiting for them to, to breathe so you can say something? right? Well, don't be that way when you're soul winning. You know, breathe. Give them an opportunity to interject if they need to, if they need to. I mean, if they don't believe and they say, hey, you know what? I just, I don't believe that. Then either you have to try to convince them to believe it or you have to stop right there because you don't want someone to pray that doesn't believe. So if they're confused about something, if it's not real clear and they want to ask a question, allow them to. Give them a chance to ask a question because you want to be thorough in your presentation. Next, number 12, look them in the eyes. Look them in the eyes. When you're talking to them, look at them in their eyes. Don't be this kind of person where you're always looking up or always looking down or you're never making eye contact with them. You know why? Because if you're never making eye contact with them, you know what they're thinking? Why is this person not looking at me? Do they not believe what they're saying? Do they not trust me? What's the deal here? Look, 
if you never make eye contact with them, I don't know, it's almost like they're wondering why instead of listening to you. But now don't, don't make weird eye contact with them. You know, <laughs> don't do that. But, but during the course of the conversation, look them in the eyes. It makes a difference. Next, give them respect. Point number 13, give them respect. Don't ever forget this. You have to win them to yourself before you can win them to Christ. This is so true. If they do not respect you, no matter what you say, it will not matter. You've got to win them to yourself before you can win them to Christ. I know, I know what some people are thinking, well, that doesn't sound right. I got to win them to Christ. Well, yeah, you got to win them to Christ. Just the other thing you got to understand is if you don't earn their respect, if you don't give them respect, if they don't respect you, they don't care what you have to say. You're never going to be able to win them to Christ until you respect them and earn their respect. So uh, I also put down here, um, your appearance and attitude make a big difference. You know, your appearance, dress sharp, have a good attitude. Don't, 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 don't be, you know, dressing down and, you know, whatever, or, you know, and, and then you're like talking to them and you're, you don't, you have a good attitude or, you know, you're, I'm out here, you know, your attitude says I'm out here only because the pastor's making me out here. I don't want to be out here. Well, if that's your attitude, they're not going to listen to you. They're not. And if you're out there, you, know, you probably won't listen and you probably don't care. But can I show you how to be saved? <laughs> if you have that kind of attitude, they're not going to listen to you, right? So here's the thing. You've got an upbeat attitude, positive. You've got to be respectful. You've got to dress sharp. And you've got to look them in the eyes. And you've got to win them to yourself before you can win them to Christ. And that's part of giving them respect. Next. Number 14, when closing, briefly explain the four points once again. When closing your gospel presentation, when you're wrapping it up, briefly say, you know, something like this. Now, when I got saved, I said, the, the pastor asked me, do you understand that you've sinned? Do you understand the penalty for your sins is death? Do you believe that Jesus is, is <coughs> excuse me, the only way to heaven? And, uh, and then I, then I say, he asked me, if Jesus was willing to save you, would you be willing to ask him to? And so what happens is, right before we pray for them to get saved, I, I reemphasize all four points. And I do it brief, because I already spent a long time talking about it, so I don't need to spend a long time again. But I just briefly reiterate, you know, I, or I say something like this, or I say, you know, when, I, you know when, when he prayed with me, I knew that I was a sinner. And I was headed for hell. And that Jesus died for me to pay for my sins and save me. And I was glad to ask Jesus Christ to save me. Now, I'm going to pray with you right now. And I'm going to give you a chance to pray and ask the Lord to save you. I'm going to give you the salvation prayer just like that preacher gave it to me. He helped me out with the words. So I'm just going to help you out with the words. And if you say this prayer and you mean it from your heart like I did, God will save you. And your name will be in the book of life. Let's pray, right? So when I do that, I, I reemphasize the four points right before I pray with them. Next, again, we're talking about being thorough. Number 15. Oh, I, I, just, I just did it, but explain what you're about to pray. Explain what you are about to pray. And I just kind of did that just then. You know, when I got saved, the pastor gave me a salvation prayer to pray. He helped me out with the words. And, and, and when I prayed the prayer, I meant it. It was from my heart. So I'm going to give you those, that salvation prayer, the same one that I prayed when I got saved. I'll tell you what the words are. When you say the prayer, all you need to do is mean it from your heart, and it'll be real. All right, next, number 16. Use your personal testimony to help them understand the need of praying to be saved. Use your personal testimony to understand the need of, of praying to be saved. So, and again, I just told you, I, I just explained that. You know, when I got saved, you know, use your testimony. When you got saved, by the way, hopefully someone prayed with you 
Or maybe you read a track and you read the prayer and you prayed and got saved by reading the track. It don't matter. But you had to pray a prayer. If you did not call upon the name of the Lord when you got saved, you did not get saved. You have to call upon his name. You do. Use your testimony. Next. Number 17. We're almost done. Pray slowly and accurately. We're talking about when you're having them pray the prayer of salvation. Pray slowly and pray accurately. Okay, so um, Zachary, let's pretend, okay? Why don't you come up here for a second? You're going you're gonna to be someone I'm witnessing to. I just wanted to make sure you were awake. That's why I called you up here. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to pray together. Like, So I, I'm, I'm going to pray with Zachary about his salvation, right? So watch this. This is what you do not do. You ready? Okay, Zachary, we're going to pray together, and I'm going to give you the prayer of salvation. I want you to pray it. And you just got to mean it from your heart. Okay, you ready? Okay, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. If you would like to be saved, pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I know that I've sinned and I need you to go to heaven. Would you please save me? <laughs> no, okay. Don't do that. Don't do that. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. All right, ready? We're going to pray together. Okay, now, if you'd like to be saved, pray this prayer and mean it from your heart. Say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, know that I've sinned, I know that I've sinned and I need you, and I need you to go to heaven. Please save me. Please save me. And take me to heaven one day. And take me to heaven one day. I am trusting only in you. I am trusting only in you. To go to heaven. To go to heaven. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Amen. 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 All right, ready to go. You just got saved. Give him a big hand. All right. Thanks, Zachary. Now, here, here's the deal. Did you see how I did that? Did you catch it? How I prayed precisely and I prayed slowly, right? That's how you need to do it. That way you know he's getting it, right? Okay, <laughs> I, I've been in church services. I, I cannot believe how preachers do this. I just can't believe it. It blows my mind. It breaks my heart. It really does. But I've been in churches where preachers are presenting the gospel and then they're given the invitation, right? And here's what they say. All right, if you're here today and you'd like to be saved, you don't know for sure that you're saved, would you raise your hand? And I'll pray for you. And then people raise their hand. And he goes, okay, I'm going to give you a prayer of salvation that I want you to pray. And I'm okay with that. I do that here because if I've properly explained the gospel, if I've thoroughly explained it in my message, then I'll pray with them from the pulpit. But here's what I've seen preachers do. All right, if you'd like to be saved, pray this prayer. Say, dear Jesus, I know that I've sinned. I need you to go to heaven. I believe in you, that you died on the cross, that you paid for my sins, that you rose again. And I'm like, dude, pause, man. What in the world are you doing? If I was sitting in that church service and I was a lost person wanting to get saved and he said, okay, pray this prayer, I would be doing everything I could to try to keep up with what he was saying. Dear Lord, I know, I said, I, yes, I, what he said, uh, uh, I believe you died on the, buried three days, rose again, all right, please uh, come into my heart, forgive me, yeah, uh, say, help me to go to heaven, amen. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just like, whatever. I can't believe preachers do that when they pray. And then when they lead sometimes people to a prayer of salvation from the pulpit, it goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> I just, dude, keep it simple. Now, here's the best way that I've learned how to do this. You ready? This is going to help you, okay? When you pray with someone about their salvation, you, here's what you do. When you give them words to say, when you pause, repeat it in your head. Then you know, or... You know, give them time to say it and then wait and listen. Like if they're praying silently or whispering, right? Okay, okay, when I say give them time, you know, repeat in your head, that's what I'm talking about when I'm in the pulpit and I'm, pre and I'm giving them a, a, a prayer of salvation and, you know, I can't hear them pray. I'll say this, dear Jesus, and then in my head I say, dear Jesus. Then I go, I know that I've sinned. And then in my head I go, I know that I've sinned. And I need you, right? So if you're praying with someone and they're praying silently, or they're whispering, then you're just going to have to repeat it in your head. But if you're witnessing to someone and they're praying out loud, then again, you can hear them pray. Give them like, you know, five or six words at a time and give them a chance to pray it and then go on to the next phrase. But, but pray slowly and pray accurately. Next, number 18. With children, it's helpful to use pictures along with the verses. 
We're talking about being thorough. With children, it's helpful to use pictures. So I have this card that Kevin Walker put together from um, uh, it just says a Roundup Ministries. And so in it, it's got the verses and it's got pictures. And when, I, when I'm thorough with a child, this is great. And it has pictures to go along with each point. Now, we sell these in our bookstore for a dollar. So if anybody would want one of these, we've, we've got maybe 40 or 50 of them left in our bookstore. We'll sell them to you for $10 before you leave. Uh, but uh, they're just a dollar. But, but when I soul win with children, I'll use this because this really helps a child to understand, you know, these points. There's, a, there's all the different children. There's the picture of heaven. There's sin in our heart. There's hell. There's the cross, Calvary. There's... Uh, Jesus giving this child a gift. The child's praying, asking Jesus to save him. And then there's the hand of Jesus picking up the child to take him to heaven when they die. So at any rate, um, when, when you're being thorough with children, and of course, always, always, always get parents' permission before you witness to their children. Always, 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 always. Do not go to a park and just go up to a child and start talking to them. You've got to get parents' permission. You've got to. Because people get mad. And if they get mad, it's not good. You're not going to be able to win them to Christ after you see their children saved. You've got to do it properly. Now, number 19 and last. Be very careful not to dilute the gospel or misrepresent it in any way. This is the last point, number 19. Be very careful not to dilute the gospel or to misrepresent it in any way. Okay, so let me read you a verse. In Galatians, write this down, Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. Let me read that for you. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. It says this, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be be accursed. All right. So God is acknowledging here that there are other gospels. Now these gospels are false gospels. So just make sure when you present the gospel, don't dilute it, don't misrepresent it, and God's word is don't pre uh, pervert it. Don't. You just keep it simple, right to the point. Don't add anything, don't take anything away. Keep it pure. Okay, we're talking about being thorough in your soul winning presentation. Does anybody have any questions? You can ask them at this time. Any questions whatsoever? Okay, not just about the lesson. We've got exactly four minutes before we need to go upstairs and eat. So does anybody have any questions about anything related to soul winning that you just want to ask right now? Miss Christy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. That's, that's a great comment. Thank you. And so, yes, I agree with that 
Awesome. Um, when I say don't ever talk to children without parents' permission, I'm primarily talking about adults. You know, don't ever approach a child without parents' permission. Um, when I go soul winning by myself, if a lady answers the door, as long as the occasion's appropriate, you know, of course, I'll witness to her. But if my wife is with me, it makes it better. And, um, you know, obviously to feel better about it. But I, I, I'll never, uh, as an adult, I'll never just not talk to another adult as long as everything is okay, right? I mean, I had this one lady come to the, to the door one time in her bath towel. Like she got out of the shower to answer the door. I gave her a track and said, please read this. I'll talk to you later. Sorry to interrupt you. Have a good day. You know, and I left, right? I didn't witness to her and, uh, at all. And um, one time I had a lady come to the church or come to the door in a, sh in a bathing suit, you know. And I'm just like, I don't think I should stand here and witness to you under this circumstance. Here's a track. Please read it. And I'll talk to you later and, uh, or come visit the church, you know. So, I mean, obviously there are times where it could be inappropriate and uncomfortable. Then just don't do it. And, uh, but if your wife's with you, let your wife witness. That's great. Your children are with you. Let the children witness to children. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, anybody else? Question or comment? Miss Beth. Okay, so that's a great question. Whenever I'm talking, and, and these, they haven't gotten saved. Is that what you're saying? Okay. So what I've learned is I go with somebody as long as they let me, right? If they'll let me witness to them and give them the whole gospel and pray with them, I will. If they let me go just a little bit and they, and they got to go and they, they want to stop, I'll say, okay. I'll, you know, if they'll let me come back again, I'll come back again and try to pick up where I left off. Some people close the door and they just say, I'm not interested. I'm sorry. You know, my, my family and I believe something different. And then I just, I, then I stop. But I'll go with them as far as they let me go. So if, they, if they're letting me witness to them and then I don't get to pray with them and they say come back another time, then I'll come back another time and I'll try to pick up where I left off. You know. But, but if they ever get to a point where they say stop, then I stop. And then I just won't go any further. Well, it... If that's what they say to me, if you couldn't hear what Miss Beth, Beth, Beth said, if they say, I'm Catholic and I'm going to die as a Catholic and I'm not changing my religion, then I'll say to them, okay, that's fine. I'm not trying to get you to change your religion. I just want you to go to heaven. Just like Catholics want to go to heaven when they die, so do I. So I don't, I'm not trying to change your religion. I just want you to go to heaven. And so can I show you how you can know from the Bible? And a lot of times if I tell them, I'm not trying to get you to change your religion, then they go, oh, okay. Because sometimes they think, you know, if I listen to you, I can't be Catholic anymore. And I, I don't want them to think that way. So I'll say it like that. Does that make sense? Okay. But I'll go with them as far as they'll let me. Anybody else? Real quick. 